Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen of the court. I thank you in advance for your time and encourage you to listen to all of the evidence presented before making your final decision. Knowing the way that a trial works and the most important aspects of it is so important to every citizen of the United States. As citizens, we have a civic duty to go to jury duty in an attempt to be a juror. Being an informed juror is so important because you are often responsible for the outcome of a case and in turn, the outcome of a person's life. Trial for a labored employment lawyer can be quite stressful, but understanding the logistics of going to trial can make all of the difference. The process of ordeer is the first step to strengthening your case. Then evidence presentation is crucial for jurors to understand the facts and basis of the case. A strong closing argument solidifies your argument and encapsulates all of the most important facts of the case and wraps it up for the courtroom. Using the voir dire process, employment lawyers are able to ask questions to better select jurors. Potential jurors are subjected to voir dire, a process in which the judge and the attorneys ask jurors questions in order to determine if the jurors are free of bias or prejudice, or whether there is any reason that they cannot be fair and impartial. Attorneys and judges typically expand on their original question in order to truly give the jurors a chance to express their answers. Framing questions in a clear and deliberate manner helps lawyers reach their desired answers. Sandra McDonough, a managing partner at Paul Plevin Solving Knotten, or PPSC, has been practicing employment law for more than 20 years. As a professional in her field, she is very familiar with the trial and voir dire processes. Ms. McDonough claims that it is very important to pick jurors that will support your case and the evidence presented. Employee-friendly jurors often show bias and are not helpful when selecting jurors. In order to try and identify potentially biased jurors, Ms. McDonough typically asks prospective jurors the following. Have any of you ever been fired from your job? As people can be fired for a multitude of reasons, she expands on her initial questions once jurors answer in order to truly reduce potential bias. Once the jurors have been selected, the presentation of evidence in the actual case can begin. Presenting evidence in a cohesive manner and utilizing interesting and demonstrative visuals helps make the case more effective. The proper demonstration of evidence can help your make your case even more powerful. According to the California courts, evidence comes in two forms. The first, people or witness testimony, and the second, things or exhibits such as photographs, records, or other documents. It is very important to ensure that the evidence is related to the case that is being presented. For example, Ms. McDonough states that it's necessary to present evidence that shows that the employer treated the employee fairly. Perceived unfair treatment often results in an unfavorable judgment for a case, even if the employee was treated fairly. The openings for bias and miscommunication in court are abundant, and if evidence is presented in an unorganized manner, it can greatly affect the case. Interesting and informative demonstratives can also be a key case aid when presenting evidence to the jury. Ms. McDonough often utilizes demonstrative evidence to help recreate witness testimony and make information easier to comprehend. Edgar M. Elliott IV, a partner at Christian and Small, defines demonstrative evidence as exhibits that are used to illustrate or clarify oral testimony or recreate a tangible thing, occurrence, event, or experiment. He then goes on to list the three reasons that demonstrative evidence is most often used. One, demonstrative evidence may be used to describe or explain ideas that are difficult to verbalize. Two, jurors tend to remember what they see longer than what they hear. Three, demonstrative evidence tends to make the trial less boring for the jury. As ever mentioned by Ms. McDonough, demonstratives can be very helpful if they are both creative and informative. Factual, relevant, and interesting presentation of evidence is very effective for a case and allows the attorney to present a strong and compelling closing argument. A powerful closing argument solidifies your case and the evidence presented. While there are many different styles of closing arguments, many attorneys follow the same basic rules. In an article published in Massachusetts Weekly, 
F. Dennis Taylor IV and Daniel I. Small list the five basic rules for closing arguments. These rules include one, don't misstate the evidence, two, don't express personal opinion, three, don't make inflammatory appeals such as towards jurors' passions or prejudices, four, don't raise forbidden topics such as possible punishment, and five, there are special limits for prosecutors making it so that they cannot intervene in closing arguments. Following these five rules provides the jury with a comprehensive summary of the case and the evidence presented. This overview allows jurors to make an informed decision regarding the case. Recognizing the downfalls of a closing argument is also important as an attorney. In the publication, The Do's and Don'ts of Closing Arguments, Mark B. Wilson acknowledges several don'ts when presenting your closing. Among these, he says, don't attack opposing counsel for the jurors, overstate or fabricate evidence, or get personal. Ms. McDonough agrees with Wilson that it is vital not to attack the opposing counsel or make false claims saying that the prosecution may have lied. In addition, in labor and employment cases, Ms. McDonough ensures that the jury is informed that they are looking for wrongful termination in these cases. Further, Ms. McDonough advises them that their decision may not be the final decision established by the court. By following the do's and don'ts of closing arguments, one is able to strongly conclude their case. Understanding and employing one's knowledge of trial logistics can help your case in countless ways. Voir dire allows attorneys to weed out potential bias, evidence presentation properly informs the jurors, and an effective closing argument gives the jurors a final encapsulation. As a United States citizen, being aware of the most important elements of the trial is a necessary part of being informed and fulfilling your civic duty. Thank you so much for your time, ladies and gentlemen of the court.